Hello, it's Metacosis Perfect Schnellis, where medicine makes perfect sense, continuing our general chemistry quick review playlist. In previous videos, we talked about dimensional analysis, significant figures, and scientific notation. Today, we review substances, elements, compounds, and mixtures. Remember that chemistry is about matter and energy. A substance is a tangible form of matter. You know what the simplest form of a substance is? It's called an element. You know the periodic table? It's called the periodic table of elements, such as oxygen, hydrogen. These are elements. A compound is two elements combined together chemically. For instance, oxygen element and hydrogen element, what do they give us? They give us water. Now, water is a compound which has brand new chemical properties different from those of oxygen and hydrogen. But what if we combine two elements physically, not chemically? Then you get a mixture rather than a compound. Oh, and by the way, the mixture will not have new chemical properties. Instead, these elements will retain their old chemical properties. Please watch the videos in this general chemistry quick review playlist in order. Remember how we tackle chemistry problems? Read the last part of the question first. Then continue and read all of the questions. What do they want from you? Oh, they want the density. Try to guess the density before you look at the choices. Do the math first and then look at all of the choices all of them choose the correct answer double check your answer when in doubt do not change your answer do not leave the question blank pick something i know that you're smart but do not hasten to the answer take your time follow the methodology step by step that's how you increase your chances of getting it right it doesn't matter how smart you are until you stop and think see what i did there let's answer the question of the previous video if one bar of soap can be traded for three toothbrushes. How many toothbrushes do I need to trade for seven soap bars? Please pause and try to answer this yourself. How do we do this? Dimensional analysis. Start with the given. I have seven soap bars and then you multiply by the conversion factors. I want to cancel soap bars with soap bars. So soap bars has to go in the denominator and I know that one soap bar will give me three toothbrushes. That's my conversion factor right here. And then you do the simple math. Seven times three is 21 toothbrushes. Bingo. Remember my 10 commandments of chemistry that was discussed in video number one in this playlist? What did we say? It's all about matter and energy. We're talking about matter today. Matter could be pure, could be a mixture. What's the difference? If you can easily separate it, it's pure matter. But if it cannot be easily separated, it's a mixture. Pure matter could be element or compound. Element has one type of atom, such as oxygen. Okay, I have only oxygen here. But if I have two or more types of atoms, that's a compound, like water. Water has two types of atoms. We have hydrogen and oxygen, as you know. Next, mixture could be homogeneous or heterogeneous. Homogeneous is uniform. It's identical in composition throughout the mixture. Example, put some salt in water. Stir, 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 stir until all the salt is dissolved in water. Now look at the glass. Look at the water. You will see that it's identical in composition throughout the glass. You look up, you look down, you look right, you look left. The salty water is salty water. You cannot tell any difference between different parts of the water. Therefore, it's homogeneous. It's uniform. A sample from one part is like a sample from another part of the water because this is homogeneous or homogeneous. Conversely, heterogeneous is non-uniform as in oil over water. You see this on the road or near a mechanic. There is always motor oil on water. Oil is on top, water is in the bottom, which means non-uniform, which means I can tell the difference. There is a line of separation between oil and water, unlike saline solutions. What's a substance again? It's a physical, tangible matter. When we combine two elements together chemically, that's a compound. But when you combine two elements together physically, that's a mixture. We talked about the seven standard international base units of matter before. Please pause and review. These are very, very important. Lowercase m is a meter. Uppercase m is a mole. Lowercase c, lowercase d is candela. Uppercase c, lowercase d is cadmium, which is an element in the periodic table. 
physical states of matter. We have solid, we have liquid, we have gas. Example of solid, a piece of wood. How about liquid? Liquid water. As for gas, the atmospheric air. Solids have definite volume. This is a piece of wood. I cannot compress it. It has definite volume. It also has definite shape. If you look at the molecules of solids, they are very close together, tightly bound with the highest density, i.e. the highest mass per a given volume, very dense structure. Conversely, liquids have definite volume, which means not compressible. If I have 100 ml of liters in this glass, I cannot compress that volume and make it shrink. How about the shape? Oh, the shape here is not definite, which means water is gonna take the shape of the container. It's gonna take the shape of the glass. Put it in a sink, it's gonna take the shape of the sink. In a wine glass, it will take a different shape like the wine glass. In a champagne glass, another shape. Density is lower than that of solid, but higher than that of gas. Molecules of liquid are far away from one another compared to solid, but more cohesive, more stuck together than gas. Next, gases. Volume, not definite. How about shape? Also non-definite, which means you can compress the gas and the gas will take the shape of whatever container it's in. Density is the lowest. The molecules are far away from one another. Here is liquid water, here is a piece of ice, and here is just water vapor. From this piece of ice to water, it's called melting or fusion. From water to ice, it's called freezing. Easy. From water to vapor is evaporation. Look at the vapor here. The opposite is called condensation. If we go from ice to air quickly without passing through the liquid state, this is called sublimation. The opposite is called deposition. These are called what? Physical changes, different phases or different states of matter. If you recall from video number one, we talked about changes in matter. We have physical change, chemical change, and nuclear change. Physical change releases small amount of energy. Chemical change releases larger amount of energy. Nuclear, on the other hand, releases tons of energy. A physical property versus a chemical property. A physical property can be measured, observed, or even changed without altering the identity of the substance. If you give me one bottle of water, it is colorless. Two bottles of water, still colorless. Five bottles of water, colorless. A big bottle of water, still colorless. So these physical properties will not alter the identity of the substance. And then I can remove the water from the bottle and pour it into a glass. Well, it's still the same water. The identity was not altered. Physical properties could be intensive or extensive. Look here, intensive, not dependent on the amount of matter. But extensive is extremely dependent on the amount of matter. Here are some examples of intensive physical properties, color density boiling point, and extensive you have mass and volume. If you want examples of physical properties, all of these are some color, odor, density, texture, mass, volume, melting point, boiling point. Memorize these three together, and these three together, and then these two together. Color, odor, density, texture, mass, volume, melting point, boiling point. Or you can switch density with texture. Put texture first and then density next because density equals mass over volume. That's a more neat way of memorizing it. Chemical properties. Oh, it's a new identity. Why? Because the substance has entered into a chemical reaction. The water is no longer water. Examples of chemical properties. Toxicity, reactivity, flammability, chemical stability. Physical change, small amount of energy. Chemical change, larger. Nuclear change, enormous. In physical changes, the substances change phase. For example, ice became water. Another example is folding a piece of paper into two or cutting it into two pieces. The paper is still paper. That's a physical change. Conversely, look at the chemical change. The substance combined with something else or gets broken down or decomposed into something new. Example is burning a piece of paper or burning a piece of wood. Yes, wood had carbon and had oxygen, but then we'll have a new compound. Yes, contains carbon and oxygen, but it has new chemical properties. The paper is no longer paper. Nuclear change, however, is a change in the composition and the identity of atoms. For example, in the core of the lovely sun, we have hydrogen, and hydrogen, they becometh helium, releasing enormous amount of energy, which makes life on our lovely planet 
possible. By the way, you can download these lovely notes in PDF forms on my website, medicosisperfectionalist.com. So substance is physical, tangible matter. What's an element then? It's the simplest form of substance. It's made of atoms. All of it is made of the same atoms. Oxygen molecule is made of two oxygen atoms. This is an oxygen atom. Here's another oxygen atom. They are identical. The same type of atoms containing the same numbers of protons. How many protons does oxygen have? Look at the periodic table and let me know in the comments. The periodic table is the periodic table of elements. Hydrogen is an element. Helium is an element, lithium is an element, beryllium is an element, boron is an element, etc. When you combine two elements together chemically, you get a compound with new chemical properties. This is very important. But if you combine two elements together physically, you get a mixture which retains the old chemical properties. An example here is oxygen and nitrogen in the atmospheric air. The oxygen still has its oxygen properties and the nitrogen still retained its nitrogen properties. What is matter made of? It's made of atoms. And that will be the topic of the next video, the atomic theory of matter. We'll talk about the atom, the nucleus, the electron, the proton, the neutron, cations, anions, etc. Again, when we combine two elements chemically with new properties, that's a compound. But when you combine them physically and they retain the old properties, that's a mixture. Question of the day. Adam has a core body temperature of 36.85 degrees Celsius. Can you convert this temperature into the Kelvin scale? Let me know the correct answer in the comments. You'll find the answer key in the next video. If you want to learn about how your kidney functions, the proximal tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal tubule, the filtration, the GFR, the filtration fraction, reabsorption, secretion, and much more, download my renal physiology course on my website medicosisperfectionalist.com. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, smash like, hit the bell, click the join button, choose the highest tier to gain instant access to more than 300 premium videos right now. Download my notes on my website medicosisperfectionalist.com. I can also tutor you personally. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalist where medicine makes perfect sense.